guys, Jacqueline here and welcome to part 13 of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video, we'll be setting up our toolbar UI so that we can equip our tools and items in the very near future. All of the sprites that I'll be using are from the Cozy Farm Asset Pack by Shuby Booby on itch.io. You can find the link to the pack in the description below. Before we jump right into setting up our toolbar, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Adam Moore for being the very first person to support me on Patreon. To begin setting up the UI, we first need to import all of the sprites that we'll be using. So navigate to your sprites folder and create a new folder called UI. Then inside the UI folder, we will right click and select import new asset. This will bring up a file explorer. In the file explorer, navigate to where your assets are saved and import any assets that you need to set up your UI. I'm going to be importing all of the assets in the UI folder of the Cozy Farm asset pack. Let's select all of our sprites in the UI folder. Then in the inspector, set the sprite mode to multiple, the pixel per unit to 16, the filter mode to point, and the compression mode to none. With all of our sprites set up, we can click apply. The next thing that we'll do is locate the sprite sheet that contains the toolbar. My toolbar is on the sprite sheet labeled UI. Then let's open the sprite editor by using the sprite editor button in the inspector. Click the slice button at the top left of the sprite editor window. The automatic mode will slice all of our sprites, but it's not perfect. There are a few slices that include multiple different sprites, but we're not going to worry about slicing everything right now. Let's just get the toolbar sliced correctly and we can worry about the other sprites later. Currently, the slice of the toolbar includes the Sunday abbreviation. Let's adjust the slice so that it stops at the top edge of the toolbar. Click apply and close the sprite editor. With our toolbar sprite sliced, we can add the toolbar to our UI. Let's first add a new empty game object to the canvas. Like the inventory, this is going to be the object that contains all of the UI elements that make up our toolbar. So let's name the game object toolbar. Then we need to move the toolbar game object to where the toolbar will live on the UI. Let's move the toolbar game object using the anchor position. Select the bottom stretch anchor position. This will move the toolbar to the bottom of the canvas, but it will also resize the toolbar's width to be the same as the screen width. Using the anchor ensures that our toolbar will be in the correct position no matter how wide our screen is. This is great, but we still don't have a vision for a toolbar. So let's add our sprite to the toolbar. Create a new image as a child of the toolbar game object. Following our naming conventions for the inventory, let's name the image background. Now we can select the background game object and set the sprite. Looking at the toolbar background, it's pretty obvious that the current image dimensions are not the right ones. Click the set native size button on the image component to set the image to be the original size of the sprite. The original size of the sprite is too big. It takes up too much of the screen and the slots don't look very proportional, at least to me. They feel taller than they are wide. So I resize my toolbar background to be 1220 on the width and 164 on the height. Let's make sure that we set our anchor on the background. With the background game object selected, hold down Alt or Option and select the center anchor. Looking at the UI, the background is actually taller than its parent game object. Because of this, the toolbar background extends off the bottom of the screen. Select the toolbar game object and adjust the height so that it's equal to the height of the toolbar background. I just copied the height value from my background into the height value of the toolbar. This causes the toolbar to become positioned a little bit wrong in our scene. Let's set the anchor position once again to move the toolbar back into the right spot. Next, we need to set up our toolbar slots. Let's add an empty game object to the background and name it slots. The slots game object will contain all of our toolbar slots, similar to how we set up the slots in the inventory. To make sure that our slots end up in the correct alignment with the background, we'll need to adjust the size of the slots game object. We want to make sure that the edges of the slots game object is positioned along the inside edges of our toolbar slots. We also need to set the anchor of the slots game object. We want the slots to stretch with screen size, but we don't want the slot object to move. So when we set the anchor, we will not hold down Alt or option. With the anchor set, let's make organizing the slots on the UI a bit easier by adding a horizontal layout group. The horizontal layout group will let us easily adjust the position, size, and spacing of each slot. With the layout group added, let's add some images to the slots game object. The images are placeholders, and we will remove them once the values in our layout group are set up. Since we have nine slots on the toolbar background, we will also need to have nine images. Then, select the slots game object and take a look at the horizontal layout group in the inspector. We want to have our slots be set in each of the slots on the background. None of the slots should be touching the dark brown areas of the toolbar border. We will need to make some adjustments so that each slot is centered in the corresponding slot on the background image. First, let's change the child alignment from top left to middle left. This will center our 
slots vertically. The leftmost slot is not centered in its background space. It's actually smushed up against the left border. So let's add some padding to the left side of the horizontal layout group. I set my padding to three because it centered the left slot the most in the background. The rest of the slots are still not centered though. This means we'll need to adjust our spacing until most of them are centered. I set my spacing to 30 because it allowed for the biggest number of slots to be centered with the exception of the rightmost slots. The rightmost slots are off center to the right, intruding on the borders between slots. To fix this, we need to add some padding to the right. Adding the padding to the right will push the slots back to the left a bit, recentering the images. I set my right padding to be three as well. Now that our background and slot objects are set up, let's set up some slot prefabs for the toolbar slots. The reason that we will need separate slots from the inventory is because our toolbar slots will display information that's different than what the inventory needs to display. The first thing that we'll do is head to the prefabs folder and create a new folder called UI. Move the slot prefab into the UI folder. Then inside the UI folder, duplicate the slot prefab. One of these will be our UI slot and the other one will be our toolbar slot. Rename the duplicated version of the slot to toolbar slot. Then rename the original prefab to inventory slot. With the slots moved and renamed, let's edit the toolbar slot. The first thing that we will do is work on making our slot look better. Let's change the background sprite image and icon sprite image. To do this, we will need to slice some more sprites to get the sprites that we need to set up our visuals for the slot. Navigate to the sprites folder and find the sprite sheet that has the inventory items in it. These sprites are placed in the inventory chopped sprite sheet of the Cozy Farm asset pack. Take a few minutes to slice out your sprites now. I'm going to do all of mine so I don't have to do them later. I'll meet you back here as soon as our sprites are sliced. Once all of the sprites have been sliced, we can click apply and close the sprite editor. Now we can set up our images in the prefab to use the final art assets. Let's select the toolbar game object in the hierarchy and set its sprite to be an inventory slot background sprite. Once the sprite is set, you'll notice that it has some weird coloring because the color of the image is still set to gray. Let's change the image color back to white so that the sprite image colors are not tinted. Then let's set the icon of the slot to be one of these inventory icons instead of the white placeholder square. I'm going to use the first icon that I find that's food. Then let's resize the icon. First, we'll need to change the anchor from stretch to center. Let's also hold down option or alt to make sure that the icon is moved to the center of the slot. Now you can resize the icon to be slightly bigger than it had been before. I'm going to set mine to 75 by 75 for the height and the width. Next, we should set the anchor back to stretch with width and height. Next, let's move our quantity text so that it fits properly inside of our bottom right corner of the slot. The text itself should be a few pixels from the right border and a few pixels above the bottom border. With the quantity text correctly aligned in the slot, let's delete the remove button. We will be changing how we remove items from the inventory really soon, so we really don't need this button anymore. In the game, we will be letting the player select a toolbar slot using their mouse and the numbers one through nine on the top of the keyboard. So the slot should have a number to indicate which key to use to select the slot. Duplicate the quantity text game object and rename it to key text. Then let's reset the text to say one and move the text box to the top right corner of the slot using the anchor position. Then we will set the text alignment to be left and top. Now we can resize the text box to be a lot smaller. I ended up setting mine to 25 by 25. 
Then let's move the slot so that the text box is aligned with the inside edge of the top and left borders of the background image. We should use a highlight to indicate which slot they currently have selected. We will need to import the highlight sprite. If you'd like to use the highlight sprite that I made, you can find the download link in the description below. Let's navigate to our sprites folder and import the new asset. Once the asset is imported, we need to set up the details in the inspector. Set the pixels per unit to 16, the filter mode to point, and the compression to none. Click apply when you're done. Now we can add the highlight sprite to the highlight image on the toolbar. This will be an image on our slot. So add the image game object to the toolbar slot and rename it to highlight. Drag the sprite from the sprites UI folder into the source image field on the image component. I want my highlight to fit the dimensions of the slot on the background sprite. So let's close the prefab editor and head back to the scene. Before we can set up the highlight, we need to delete all of the placeholder images and drag a toolbar slot prefab onto the slot game object. Duplicate the slot until you have nine of them. Then in the scene, zoom in to look at the first slot on the toolbar. Let's expand the toolbar slot and select the highlight game object. We will be adjusting the size of the highlight to fit to the border of the slot. Using the rec tool, drag the edges of the highlight sprite to sit just against the dark brown border. This highlight is exactly how I want all of the highlights to look. So let's apply this change to the prefab. Select the toolbar slot game object in the hierarchy. And in the inspector, let's click on the overrides menu. This will show us all of the changes that we've made to the game object object that differ from the prefab. Click on the highlight rec transform change and then click apply. This will apply the highlight rec transform change to all of our toolbar slots in the scene. Now let's open the toolbar prefab and turn the highlight game object off so that we won't see it in the scene. We only want to see the highlights for the slots that are selected. Before we jump into adding some functionality to our toolbar, let's set the key text on each slot to be the correct key number. Let's label the slots one through nine from left to right. Now let's make sure that we can select the slot using the keyboard and mouse. First, First, we need to create a new script to handle all of the UI for the toolbar. Let's go to our script's UI folder and create a new c -sharp script. We will name our new script toolbar underscore UI. Then let's click on it to open the script. In order to do anything to the toolbar slots, we're going to need a reference to them. So let's add a list to the script that will hold all of our slots. Let's set the type of the list to be slot UI since all of the slots in the UI have the slot script on them. Then let's name the list to toolbar slots and set it to be equal to a new list of slot UIs. Let's also serialize our list so we can set it up in the inspector. Now that we have access to all of our slots, we need a way to select one of them when we get input from the player. Let's create a function to handle selecting a slot. This function should be public so that we can call it when the pointer click event is triggered. The function won't need to return anything, so let's make it a void and name it select slot. We also need to tell the function which slot we're trying to select from the slots list, so we need to pass in an index for the slot. When we click on a slot or press a number key, this function will be called. Let's create a variable to hold the slot that is selected. This will allow us to keep track of which slot is selected at any given time. Under the toolbar slots list, create a private slot UI variable called selected slot. Then in the select slot function, we can set the selected slot to the corresponding slot in the list. In order for this to be successful, there needs to be slots in the list. If there are no slots in our list, then we will get an index out of range error when we try to select the slot. Since we know that we have nine slots on our toolbar, we should make sure that we have nine slots in our slot list. If we do in fact have all of the required slots to select from, then we can select the slot at the index we specified. Let's also add a debug log to make sure that the select function is working when we test it out in Unity. This will give us an idea if we're selecting the correct slot on the UI. Now that we have a way to select a slot, we should check for input from our player. At the bottom of the class, underneath the select slot function, let's create a new private function called check alphanumeric keys. The check alpha numeric keys function is responsible for calling the select item function when the player presses one of the nine keys. Let's check for input on each of the keys using if statements. I'll first add an if statement that checks if the number one key has been pressed. If it has, then we should call the select slot function passing in the corresponding index. For the first slot, the index will be zero. Now we can copy and paste this if statement to the bottom of the function eight times. Then let's update each of the if statements to check the correct keys and pass the correct index. Work your way through all nine if statements, setting the key code to be one more than the previous key code and the index to be one more than the previous index. Now we can call the function from update. We should select a sprite as soon as we start the game. That way a toolbar slot is always selected. If we don't do this, then no slots will be selected until the player selects one for the first time. In the start function, 
function called the select slot function and pass a zero to it to select the first slot. Then save the script and head back to Unity. Before we can test out selecting the slot, we need to add the toolbar UI script to the toolbar game object. Then we also need to add the toolbar slots to the toolbar slots list in the inspector. Lock the inspector and then drag all of the slots into the list to add the items all at once. Then make sure to unlock the inspector when you're done. Let's hit play and make sure that we can select a slot when we press the one through nine keys on the keyboard. Make sure to open your console window so you can see your messages. When we press one of the alphanumeric keys corresponding to the toolbar slot, it should print a message that tells you the name of the slot that you selected. Take a minute to verify that the name printed out is the same name as the slot that you selected. If any of the console messages print out the wrong name, double check all of your calls to the select slot function and verify that you are passing in the correct index to the function. Now that the key presses are working, let's set up a mouse click to select the slot. Stop playing and open up the toolbar slot prefab and select the parent game object. Then click add component in the inspector and search for the event trigger component. With the event trigger added, let's set up a pointer click event. Unfortunately, we won't be able to set up the events in the prefab editor, so let's close it. In the hierarchy, select the first slot and drag the toolbar game object onto the pointer click event. Then we need to select the toolbar UI select slot function. The index of the slot is zero, so we can leave the parameter at the number zero. Then let's work our way through all of the slots, setting up the event to call the select slot function on the toolbar, passing in the correct index. Now that all of our pointer click events have been set up, we can hit play and try it out. When you use your mouse to click on a slot, you should get messages printed in the console that correspond to the slot you clicked on. If everything's printing out correctly, then we've correctly set up the logic for selecting a slot. But we should do more than just print to the console we should let the player know which slot they have selected. This is where our toolbar slot highlight comes into play. Stop playing and save the scene, then open your slot UI script. The slot UI script handles setting up the slot, so this is the best place to handle turning on or off the highlight on the slot. Under our quantity text variable, let's add a new game object variable called highlight. The highlight variable will hold a reference to our highlight game object so we can turn it on or off when a new slot is selected. Now let's add a public function that lets us set the highlight on or off after the set empty function. Name the function set highlight and give it a boolean parameter so that we can indicate if we should turn the highlight on or off. Passing in a value of true will indicate that we should turn the highlight on and a value of false will indicate that it should be turned off. Let's name the boolean is on. Inside of the set highlight function, we'll use the set active function on the game object to turn the game object on or off. This is a built-in function that Unity provides for us. You can access the set active function through the highlight game object. The function requires a boolean to indicate on or off, so let's give it our is on parameter. Then save the script and head back to the toolbar UI script. In the toolbar UI script, take a look at the select slot function. We will set the highlight of the selected slot when we select it, but we also need to turn off the highlight of the previous selected slot. Since we're selecting a slot when the game starts, we know that before then there isn't a selected slot. So we should only try to turn off the highlight if the previously selected slot is stored in the variable. Let's check if the selected slot is not null before we set the selected slot to a new one. If it's not null, we will set up the selected slot's highlight to be turned off. Then after we set the selected slot, we can turn the highlight on using the set highlight function on the slot. Let's remove the debug log since we already know that this function is selecting the correct slot. Then save the script and head back to Unity. Now let's get the toolbar slot's highlight set up. Open the toolbar slot prefab and select the parent game object. In the inspector, you'll see that the highlight field has been added to the slot UI script. Drag the highlight game object from the hierarchy into the field, then close the prefab editor. All of the toolbar slots in the scene will now have their highlights set up. Let's hit play and try selecting some slots. When we select a slot, the highlight will now appear on the slot that we selected and it will disappear from the previously selected highlight. This is looking great and it works exactly like we want it to. In the next video, we'll be updating the UI on the inventory to use the UI included in the Cozy Farm Asset Pack. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified when the next video comes out. You can also support me on Patreon using the link on the screen and in the description below. The more of you guys that support me, the more time I can spend making these videos. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, please feel free to join using the link in the description. The Discord's a great place to meet other developers, ask for help when you get stuck, suggest content for upcoming videos, or just hang out with a cool crowd of people. The link is in the description below. Once again, I just want to say thank you to Adam for becoming my very first Patreon supporter. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. It's too many slots. <laughs>